Hello and welcome to the Ice Guy. This is the show that takes you into the world of the National Hockey League. Every game, every day, from a betting perspective. With pro sports handicappers, Ian Cameron, Alex P. Smith, and various guests from the world of hockey and sports betting. And now, here's your host, Ian Cameron. Welcome to the Ice Guys, presented by Boston Hemp, Inc. Sunday, April 7th. Ian Cameron, Connor Mack, uh, Alex B. Smith, hoping to join us at, later in the show as well. We're ready to break down this Sunday NHL card. And the great thing about April regular season NHL coming down the stretch is that Sundays are more meat on the bone than normal. Uh, and this is great at this time of year. Nine games coming up here uh, on this Sunday NHL slate. So we're definitely looking forward to that. Before we get into Sunday, though, we'll look back on the Saturday NHL action, which started with just a just an absolute rip roarer barn burner, whatever you want to call it, between the Tampa Bay Lightning and Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, just a huge game for Pittsburgh and a huge win. Uh, uh, and a, just a, a critical two points for them. And for the Pittsburgh Penguins, they for the whole time that they've put this run together to get themselves back into the playoff mix, I thought there were times where they won, but they escaped. You know, they had goaltending that saved their ass. They outscored the opponent. They capitalized on some opportunities. The other team didn't play well. Uh, bad scheduling spots for the opponent, all that. And I thought Pittsburgh got to this point where they could give themselves a chance to make the playoffs without playing a truly spectacular game. I thought through two periods against Tampa Bay, that's maybe the best two periods of hockey from the Pittsburgh Penguins I've seen all season. The way they played in the first two periods against Tampa Bay, they were the better team, and it wasn't close in the first two periods. They dominated. They carried the play in the opening two periods, and it was very impressive. Yes, and Evgeny Malkin, who's had a brutal season by his standards, what a time for him. Better late, get yeah. going with two goals last yesterday afternoon, and if he can get red hot somehow, I mean, I've, I've got to see more from the guy. He hasn't had a very good season, but if he can get on a run, and he can get red hot down the stretch. That's certainly going to enhance the chances for this Pittsburgh Penguins team. But what I loved about Pittsburgh is you knew Tampa Bay, even down 4-1, was going to make a push. And they did better than that. They came all the way back with three unanswered goals and tied the game 4-4. And you thought, uh-oh. At that point, I was worried about Pittsburgh even blowing the point. And I was worried about them losing in regulation at that point once Tampa Bay tied at 4-4. But they rescued it. Michael Bunting with a few minutes left in the third with a rebound goal to put them ahead 5-4. They hung on. Tampa Bay did everything but tie it the final minute. They had a million chances. A great sacrifice block and shots by the Pittsburgh. A good, a terrific goaltending. Even though he gave up four goals, he was still very good, Alex Nedeljkovic. Uh, and the Pittsburgh Penguins get themselves a huge two points and a 5-4 win against Tampa Bay. They're right there uh, in the playoff race, uh, in a playoff spot as we speak right now, tied for the second wild card uh, in the Eastern Conference. Uh, Boston with a 3-2 overtime win against Florida. That pretty much seals the division for them. I mean, they're now up five points on the Florida Panthers with just a handful of games left. So I think when you look at it, it's going to be tough now for Florida to win the division. I don't even think Florida really cares that much about winning the division. Paul Maurice kind of hinted at it all week. We're going to try to give guys rest. We've got a couple key cogs out injury-wise with Aaron Ekblad and Carter Verhage. So I think they're kind of just, you know, they don't care anyway. There's a team that barely yeah. got into the playoffs last year, well, the eighth seed. You know, I don't think who they play in the first round or winning the division is all that, you know, on the first and foremost uh, thought on their minds right now. Uh, but nevertheless, whatever chance I think Florida had, you know, to win the division uh, pretty much uh, went away there with that 3-2 loss to uh, Boston in overtime. Jesper Boquist getting the overtime winner. And that game had, had had scrums pretty much after every whistle. Uh, you can tell there's not a whole lot of uh, uh, love uh, between the Panthers and Bruins, uh, as uh, you would expect. Uh, Chicago, 3-2 winners over the Dallas Stars. Um, I'm not totally shocked by this. I mean, Dallas has been playing well. I still thought Dallas would win just because of how well they're playing. But this was a pothole spot. You're off a huge win against Edmonton. you got a big game on the road against Colorado coming up tonight. Figured you might be in a little bit of a tricky spot against Chicago, but and they were. Uh, and Chicago got the job done 3-2 there. I cashed a ticket with Winnipeg, 4-2 win uh, over the Minnesota Wild. Minnesota, good night. I mean, they were already out of the playoffs, but <laughs> that pretty much seals it 
if it wasn't already, uh, as the Jets get a 4-2 win uh, over the Minnesota Wild. Uh, we'll start. We'll stop there, and we'll get Connor's takes on those afternoon games. C Mac, it was a wild afternoon yesterday in the NHL. It was. Shout out to everyone in here. Uh, JT, good to see you. Yeah, I got a uh, got the setup back up. Uh, Bavana took oh, yeah, me a little time part. from the move. Uh, back to normal, the normalcy of my uh, my setup. Canadian Capper, good to see you, Robert. Uh, Real Deal Prime, the Grinder, up in here. BG, all you guys. Shout out to you guys. Hit the like button. Yeah, let's get the light. I mean, we talked about here three or four weeks ago. I was like, Pittsburgh, right off the ready to golf. Uh, yeah, and I thought it was, you were on yeah. that day, on that Sunday, I remember. They yeah. trade away Jake Gensel. It's got all the warning signs of a team that's out. They were playing terrible. They trade away Jake Gensel. Everyone had the right to believe it was over for them. But here we are. But look, this is not just a product of Pittsburgh, C-Mac. This is a product of the Islanders, the Capitals, the Red Wings, and all these teams sputtering mm -hmm. and stumbling in front of them to give them this chance to make it. Very, very true. And got a huge game tomorrow uh, at Toronto. Yep. This Pittsburgh, that would be Absolutely. massive yep. for them. You mentioned it. I think Panthers just want to get uh, get healthy. They don't give a shit where they're at, like you were talking about. Yeah, weird spot there. The Stars always kind of play down their competition. You mentioned the big game. We'll get to it uh, tonight versus the Avs. You know, Wild, I think they've kind of parked it. Same thing with the Blues, you know. Um, just kind of go. They look decent first period. 2-2 and just kind of crumbled late, couldn't get anything going, losing to the to the Jets. I didn't have anything in that one. Uh, I don't know. Did you hit Columbus? I was on then. Flyers. Talk about a folding. I should job. have been on Columbus now because, I, you know, I, I just didn't trust them because they're decimated. And Jet Greaves and that, I wasn't sure what we were going to get. And I thought, I still thought, you know, Philadelphia for as much as – and I didn't mention them. They're, of all the teams stumbling that have given Pittsburgh a chance, no team stumbling more than the Philadelphia Flyers right now. Uh, nobody wow. just absolute brutal stretch for them uh, coming into the weekend. What did I say about Philly after torts, you know, Ford his guts out there on Wednesday. They had the loss in overtime to the Islanders. I said, they should take four out of four against Buffalo and Columbus points. That is, you know how many they got zero, none, um, just unfortunate right now. I mean, the flyers are, in, they're in big trouble. They're in big trouble because now they're not even in a playoff spot. And I believe they have one fewer game remaining than everybody else. So, you know, they, they're they really? looking out in the games in hand as well uh, on opposing teams. Because you look at the standings right now, the wild card, Flyers are 83, but they're out. Pittsburgh's got it over them because Flyers only have four games left. Pitt Penguins mm. have five. So that's the uh, difference. But it's just a horrendous weekend for them. I mean, the defense has been terrible. The power play. Oh, my gosh. They have an opportunity, Connor, early in that game. Four-minute power play uh, against Columbus. Chance to grab momentum. This is a bad Columbus team. You know, a goal Decimated by experienced. injuries. And yeah. the power play was a disaster. They could barely get a chance with that power play. The power play has killed the Flyers this year. It's been embarrassing how bad the power play has been for the Philadelphia Flyers. And uh, it just – and I knew the moment that – they didn't get capitalized on that four-minute power play. I'm like, they might be in trouble in this game, even against the depleted Blue Jackets. And sure enough, they were in trouble. And Jackets ended up steamrolling them six to two. Samuel Erson has nothing left in the tank. He has just he's a goalie that's hit the wall. I don't know how you can yeah. keep starting him. But your option is Ivan Fedotov, who has what two games of experience at the NHL level. It's not like he was uh, spectacular by any stretch against Buffalo the night before so you're in a brutal spot with your goaltending and this is just a trickle down effect from the carter hart situation with his issues and him him being indicted and that Man. scandal with the world junior team years ago that's where these whole issues have come you know it's been samuel larson gave them some good starts for a while he's hit the wall uh, Fedotov is still someone you really can't fully trust. He's very young, and he didn't look as good against Buffalo. And then you had Sandstrom, who they don't even trust to start. He's back in the HL, and they put Cal Peterson when he was here on waivers because he was because he was so bad. So <laughs> it's just a bad way for the Flyers' goaltending right now, and that's a terrible loss for them. Not only to lose to Columbus, you're getting drubbed. You're getting absolutely crunched. 
by that Columbus team, six to two last night. Just terrible stuff from the Flyers. I don't see them making it. I mean, the, the Flyer beat writers are all saying it looks like the season's over, and they shouldn't think that way because they're still tied with yeah, Pittsburgh. Still. But it doesn't feel like they've still got a chance because of how bad they've been. Awful. They've just been. You know, I thought they played a little bit over their head all year long with what they had to deal with, and it's just been, yeah. Yeah. but it's just been real bad. The Did last you see the bottom all have. out like this in the last week or two. My goodness. Yeah, ugly, ugly stuff. Ugly stuff indeed. Uh, quickly through the rest of the game, San Jose three two over St. Louis. Shout out to Devin Cooley. You know, we've made a few jokes about him and. Uh, that the bad third periods he's had, but credit to him. And he looks like a really genuine person. The the interview he had after the game, getting his first uh, NHL win yesterday was excellent. Uh, Great to see that. Uh, So uh, San Jose with a three, two win against St. Louis. It's back to back wins in two weeks for San Jose against St. Louis. So the sharks, believe it or not, the lowly sharks have had a big hand in ending whatever playoff hopes the St. Louis blues had Toronto with a four, two win against Montreal, Austin Matthews, one goal closer to 70, He's six away from that mark, getting a 64th goal. It was an onslaught from Toronto to start the second period, and then they pretty much used that four-goal outburst to pace themselves to a 4-2 victory against Montreal. Uh, Best bet winner for me in this game, New Jersey-Ottawa, over six and a half. Uh, It cashes 4-3 Devils. Uh, The kind of thing we like, uh, obviously, is two teams out of the playoffs and suspect defense and good over situations at this time of year. And that's why we like that Devils and Senators over so much. And the Devils get the 4-3 win there in that one. The Islanders, glad I kind of refrained from Nashville here. I was worried a little bit because the Islanders are the desperate team, the urgent team, kind of like what we saw with Tampa Pittsburgh. Tampa's the better team overall, but urgency, you don't match it, you can lose. And Tampa lost to Pittsburgh. They couldn't match the Islanders' urgency. And same thing with Nashville to the Islanders. Although that being said, you know, Nashville did have 41 shots. And look, Semyon Varlamov, he likes playing for Patrick Waugh uh, because he was excellent. 41 saves shutout. Uh, he was magnificent for the uh, Islanders uh, in that game and gets them a huge two points. And now because of Washington stumbling, Philly stumbling, the New York Islanders with that win now are in a very decent spot. Still with uh, five games to go. And they have 85 points. So they're two clear of Pittsburgh and Philly, three clear of Washington and Detroit. Lou Lamorello brought Patrick Waugh in here to save the season and try to get this team into the playoffs. And Patrick Waugh and the Islanders are closing in on making that a reality. Uh, But uh, still a long way to go. But uh, that was a big two points against a very good Nashville team for the uh, Islanders last night, getting the 2-0 shutout there. Uh, what else did we see last night? We saw L.A., I mean, 6-3 to three against Vancouver. You talk about goalies that have hit a bit of a wall. You can say that about Casey to Smith. I think he's hit a bit of a wall for Vancouver. He's done pretty well for the most part since mm-hmm. Thatcher Demko has been out, but he's been struggling lately. It was not a good night from him. Uh, the team, you know, a lot of mistakes. I thought they had enough chances, but didn't bury enough of them, Vancouver. L.A. was opportunistic and a 6-3 win for the Kings there. And then the Battle of Alberta disappointed me from a a total standpoint. We had the over trifecta. Unfortunately, none of them come through. Uh, It was a very good performance, actually, from Pickard uh, in that. He faced 35 Calgary shots, only gives up two goals. Edmonton with a nice win on a back-to-back after beating Colorado the night before. 4-2 Oiler victory there uh, over the uh, Calgary Flames. I'm upset I didn't take Edmonton team total because I've talked about the team total against Calgary for a long time now, and I should have been on that. That should have been part of the repertoire, and I didn't bet it. Frustrated with that. But a solid night overall, and the best bet winning uh, pushed us forward to a slight winning night, winning day. Uh, what do you think? Uh, what did you think of the night games there, C-Mac? Yeah, uh, I mean, Leafs, huge uh, second period, like you talked about, four goals, just kind of put that away. Yeah, I had the over New Jersey, uh, Ottawa. We'll get to Ottawa uh, later. Some of, but yeah, fan appreciation night. We'll see if uh, they could step up. Yeah, that was excellent by the by the Islanders to get that win. And that third period, twenty shots too. The Preds uh, had just couldn't get anything. Big win there. Yeah, I love the Kings last night. I thought. Uh, you know, Vancouver, you mentioned dismiss kind of hit a wall. I just, this is like Vancouver's time of year where they're just, they play so well, they're kind of choking. Like, I don't know. They kind of got to flip a switch and we'll see if they can do it in the playoffs. Um, I'm not so sure. Yeah, I didn't play Edmonton Calgary. That was uh, Calgary. 
It's my guy, uh, Gokster, likes to call it. But uh, Oilers, he's yeah. Canadian he's Canadian and calls it that. That's not right. I mean, he's got a <laughs> he's, health care. Yeah. Oh, I love it, though. It's uh, every time, though. I know. So. It does. Yeah. Calgary. <laughs> it's not that difficult. Calgary. Yeah. I know it's Gary. Gary we think of Gary, G-A-R-Y, as Gary. I get it. But when it's in the middle of a word, no. It's <laughs> yeah, Calgary. There we go. Uh, good stuff. All right, let's get into the Sunday slate. We've got a game starting in half an hour, top of the hour, TNT, uh, Sunday afternoon game here on TNT Net National Television here. The Buffalo Sabres, Detroit Red Wings, Detroit minus 130 home favorites, uh, six and a half the total in this game. You know, I didn't mention Buffalo uh, as far as the teams that are still battling in the playoffs, but Buffalo does have five games left, and they're only four points out, so they're not totally dead yet. But this is one of those games where they got to have it. You know, if you, if you want to extend the hopes for another day, you have to win this game and preferably in regulation. You lose this game in regulation, I think then we can finally say enough with this Buffalo nonsense about them uh, making the playoffs. I think they're probably already not going to. If you ask me right now, they're not going to make it. You know, there's just too many teams. They got to jump. Too much has to happen. But Buffalo enters this game four points back. Five games left, and they know they need two points here. Simple as that. You have very little room for error, margin for error. So you need that win here today. So, you know, I'd expect Buffalo to play hard, play strong here, and they have won back-to-back -back games this week, uh, beating uh, Philadelphia and Washington, two teams they had to beat to maintain this little sliver of hope that they have uh, to make the playoffs. Um, so I don't want to lay a price against Buffalo in this spot, but – I mean, Detroit's coming off a game where they played a Ranger, very good Ranger team, very close, very tough, 4-3. Uh, they were, uh, got some offense going. Uh, Dylan Larkins played great, and obviously we talked about it all the time, how much better they are with him in the lineup. Uh, Alex Lyon's been better since uh, Derek Lalone sat him down for that week, gave him that break. Uh, so we'll see how he fares here in this one. But obviously, that's a huge, huge game. For both teams, and even for Detroit, it's still a huge game because they're they're on the outside looking in right now. 82 points, one behind both the Penguins and uh, the Flyers for the 83 points that they need. And remember with the Red Wings, we've said it already a couple of times, this is a Red Wings team that their only pathway to getting into the playoffs is the second wild card. So that's the key for them is that they, they've got to, um, they've only got one pathway to making the playoffs. And that is something that uh, you Definitely want to keep in mind here uh, with this game. Is that me? No, I think yeah, the end computer might have oh, frozen. Okay. You might have to pop back in uh, with this really? one. But yeah, I mean, Connor, we can, we can start with you on this one. I mean, big Atlantic division uh, matchup. You know, both these teams, like I said, needing the points. Uh, oh, yeah. You back? No, oh, sorry about that. I didn't, I didn't okay. realize that. Double Ian. <laughs> We're back. Yeah. So again, the Sabres, the Sabres or sorry, the Red Wings only pathway, Sabres only pathway too. both teams because they're in the Atlantic is the wild card. I mean, the other teams that are in the Metro, they've got two pathways to make the playoffs, third in the Metro or one of the, or the second wild card. So uh, that is why there's less margin for error for these two teams. Um, you know, I, I, to me, I'm staying off the side. Uh, the, the one thing I am, interested in somewhat and i've been burned by a couple of these games uh, because i'm kind of leaning with the series history the way it's been like it's been goals galore between detroit and buffalo six of the last seven meetings have gone over the total the last meeting though didn't oh, yeah. in detroit it was that 4-1 win for the red wings so i kind of want to look at an over trifecta here but a lot li li recently these first periods have not been getting the job done from a scoring standpoint Look at Tampa Pittsburgh yesterday. Perfect example. Same time as well. 1 p.m. Eastern at start time. First period was slow. One goal. And then the floodgates opened after that. So this might be a spot where full game over. I do like it. Six and a half. But I'm going to pump the brakes on the over trifecta here. I'm worried about one nothing or something like that again in the first period. And then the floodgates open second and third. This might be a good live over after the first period if it's no score yeah. or if it's one nothing after the first period. That's going to be the approach. I'll dabble a little on a full game over, nothing on the side, and I'll bet live over second going into the second period if we have that zero goal or one goal first period uh, in this game. Uh, Alex is with us now. Alex, welcome in. Uh, what do you think here, Buffalo, Detroit? 
Yeah, like I said, it's a big game for both these teams. And even Buffalo, I mean, obviously they'll need a ton of help if they could try and, and get the last uh, wild card spot. But like I said, it would have to be a wild card spot because they're also in that Atlantic division. So, uh, you know, it makes makes for a little bit of, a, of an interesting battle within these two teams as opposed to where, like I said, you know, you have room to wiggle in the Metro, which I think that that, that spot is actually a little bit more interesting because of the, of the extra uh, playoff berth there. But, I, you know, this game is a good draw season candidate, but I don't like the price. The highest thing I'm seeing is around 325, 330. Uh, so this is one where I might even look to bet the draw live. Wait for a goal, hope for, hope for a goal somewhere in the, in the first period. And then, like I said, maybe that's when we jump in with the live over. But I, I'll be probably grabbing a live draw here as well. So this is a, a good live betting game. Kind of wish this one was going on around 230 or so. But, uh, mm. you know, more than likely be on or at least getting off the air when this one uh, gets close to the end of the first period. And that's what I'll be looking to jump in on. Three very clear cut and dried goal. Actually, yeah, three. Maybe a little on Jack Quinn because I think he's good and he might be heating up. He had two in the last game against the Flyers. Two very clear goal, three very clear goal props. Two for Buffalo. Tage Thompson has been good lately. He's showing up in these big games. And JJ nice. Paterka. How can we not look at JJ Paterka again for Buffalo? Seven goals, two assists in the last uh, seven games for the Buffalo Sabres. And the clear choice for Detroit is Dylan Larkin. You know that guy shows up in the big moments, in the big games. Uh, scored against the Rangers the other night. Uh, a big goal in that one. Uh, Dylan Larkin is someone that. Um, he looks ready for these moments. If they make the playoffs, he's going to have a big hand in it. He's been great. They just need a lot more of those Red Wing teammates of his to jump on his back and play the way Dylan Larkin does because he's been excellent down the stretch. He's doing everything. He's doing his Crosby impression for this Detroit team. He's trying to drag him into the playoffs. Can the rest of his teammates join him? Uh, C-Mac, what do you think here? Sabres, Red Wings. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure they're glad uh, he's back in there. Uh, and sometimes he just uh, has got to do a little too much. I don't want the side. You know, the other on Friday was one I was just kicking myself. I want to take the Sabres so bad, but they just haven't strung two wins together all year. It they seemed like that was just last two. I know they finally them. did. And there's uh, maybe that was more. They're playing a little bit better hockey, but the Flyers are just awful. We just talked about it. You know, it was kind of both where I just didn't. And I was kicking myself. Uh, Sabres come through a little bit of Buffalo to start winning here and pulling maybe a few wins off towards the end of the year uh, when they don't have anything. I mean, like you guys talked about, they still could get in, but they need a lot of things to happen uh, for the wild card to win. So I don't want anything on the side. You mentioned the battle. I remember that last month, the game, uh, the four, one big win uh, for the Red Wings dogs too. in that, that game, I think right around plus plus one fifteen. but the games before this in the series, bunch of overs. That's what I want to look at. But these morning games, we talk about all the time tricky you know they're just especially maybe his first period you guys mentioned it maybe look to a live over if this uh you know starts out slow in this one but uh, as of now i'm off well, and right, that's uh, one thing too these two teams are used to playing a lot of day games they've, they've been doing that for the majority of the season so there, there may be less of a feeling out process here than, than say with some other matchups Exactly. They're very familiar with each other. Uh, prior to that 4-1 game, it had been over in every recent head-to-head -head meeting. So it's going to be interesting to see. A lot of goals, too. And some of them, like oh, yeah. 10. A lot of goals. Uh, we'll yeah. see how that fit. How it, it fit. Now, if this was Buffalo-Detroit like a few weeks ago when Alex Lyon was just a hot mess, I'd be uh, really loving the over here. Um, but he's been a lot better lately. He kept the minute against the Rangers. Lukanen's been pretty good. You know, for the majority of the new year, but still, series history, you got to lean on it. So I do, I like I did. The only thing I've grabbed pregame is a little over six and a half in those props that I mentioned. I'll add some over after the first period if it starts slow. You know, that's going to be the approach here. All right. Next up, we've got uh, Minnesota uh, and Chicago. Another afternoon home game for the Blackhawks back to back uh, this weekend. Minnesota minus 200 road favorites, five and a half the total here in this game. Well, for Minnesota, obviously you have no playoffs to look forward to. You're just playing out the string. But you do have something to look forward to here. Your future and goal uh, is going to be in net for this game this afternoon. Jesper Volstead here for the uh, Minnesota Wild and uh, his second start this season for the Minnesota Wild. Remember, he has already made his NHL debut uh, earlier this year, but uh, it was not a, a pretty one by any stretch of the imagination. Seven goals, and it was Matty Robinson's 
uh, Dallas Stars that inflicted that damage on Jesper Volstead uh, earlier this season, and that starts seven two for Dallas in that game. We'll see how he fares here. Like he's got all the ability in the world, um, but you got a Minnesota team that's uh, you know who's blocking shots. You got to wonder at, at this stage of the year. We say that about all these teams that are uh, out of the playoff mix. Uh, that does concern me about Minnesota moving forward. There's not going to be that attention to detail. There's not going to be that, you know, willingness to block a shot and get in the way of one uh, from a lot of these teams that are now in the spot that they're in, not making uh, the playoffs at this rate. Um, give Chicago credit. We talked about Dallas might be in a little bit of a pothole spot yesterday uh, in between the Edmonton win and the big showdown with Colorado coming up tonight. And Chicago took advantage, 3-2 win over the Dallas Stars. But tell you what, Dallas missed a ton of golden opportunities in that game. And Peter Morozik was terrific. That combination is really what allowed Chicago to escape with the uh, 3-2 victory uh, over Dallas. But credit to them. It played hard, but they just had to rely on their goaltending. A lot of uh, uh, just bad finishing. You know, not clinical, if you will, finishing around the net where the Dallas Stars yesterday in that 3-2 game. We'll see if uh, Minnesota can uh, bury some more of those chances. You would have to assume, with this being the back-to-back, -back, that we're going to see Alex's uh, favorite goaltender get the Hall of Fame ready for him, uh, Arvid Soderbloom here uh, in net for the uh, Chicago uh, Blackhawks, most likely today uh, on the back-to-back. Uh, -back. That being said, I will say this about him. He was good in his last start, but this was a floundering Philadelphia team that he played. He only gave up one goal, but again, that was a floundering Philadelphia team that is really having uh, spit in the bit right now. So, how much stock and how much um, how much can you put into that performance for Soderblom, who prior to that had been struggling uh, quite a bit? So, I don't know. To me, this looks like an uh, obvious over by Fecta uh, to me. Uh, one and a half and five and a half here. Uh, first period, full game. That's the way I'm going to go with it. Nothing on the side. I'm not laying minus 200 with Minnesota. Season's over for them now. This goalie, this young goalie that I think is going to be good in the long run, doesn't mean he's going to be good today. Remember, this is a guy that got shelled for seven goals. Now, I know Dallas ain't Chicago, but still, he's got to play better. He's very inexperienced at this level. And is are these blue liners going to sacrifice blocking shots now that they're not making the playoffs? That's a thing. They, they, they might leave this kid on an island here uh, this afternoon, Minnesota. You know, you're not as locked in defensively when you're now officially after. And that loss definitely makes it pretty much official for Minnesota. They're not making the playoffs uh, with that loss to Winnipeg yesterday. And on the flip side, do we trust Soderblom to keep the puck out of the net for Chicago? Probably not. So to me, this looks like an obvious over by Fecta here. Obvious doesn't always cash, but man, sticks out like a sore thumb here. Over one and a half first period, over five and a half full game. Uh, Alex, what do you think here? Minnesota, Chicago. Yeah, I bet uh, both of those last night, actually, uh, knowing that more likely it'd be sort of bum getting the start for the Hawks. And I knew Walsh would be getting it as well. His uh, Both his mom and his dad are in the U.S. Uh, here to watch the start. When he made his debut, his dad was here, his mom wasn't. So that was part of the reason why Walsh gets the this, this start. In fact, Walsh was actually just in Chicago yesterday without the team and the team meeting him there uh, just to kind of to line those things up, apparently. So. Uh, he'll be a little bit more focused. I don't expect him to give up seven goals in this game, but he definitely will give up some goals. Uh, like you mentioned, there's nobody really blocking shots or, or going to be working as hard as they were the first time around. Uh, he was in net just simply because of the fact this is the first game where they're officially eliminated. It was the L.A. law uh, win last night that officially took Minnesota out. So now they all know that, hey, you know, we, we got our tea time set. Our, our travel uh, arrangements will be made soon for the summer. Uh, you, you probably won't see too much, uh, you know, full game grade A effort from the Wild, even if, if this is a rivalry game against the Hawks. But with the early start time as well, I could definitely see this been kind of being a slop fest. So uh, first period over. Yeah, not so much on both teams to score in the first period, but just going the first period over and a little heavier on the over five and a half period and full game over here for uh, Alex with the uh, Wild and the uh, Blackhawks. Uh, C-Mac, what do you think here? Minnesota, Chicago. I'm with you guys. Uh, last night I was, I, with both these goalies, I thought it would be in. I just went over, over, over as I always uh, hit. And these are two of the better teams, you know, but it's just different. We're at the very end of the year where I bet a lot of these teams under, especially the Blackhawks, on uh, certain spots with the Wild. Uh the while you talked about are out of it, should it be this big of a number? I'm tempted by the Blackhawks, uh, but I don't know if I could do it. And the Wild have just owned them. I think they beat them 10 straight. It's just been uh, kind of a beatdown. 
but I think we can get some goals. I'm definitely on that over. And people have put in the chat, I don't mind any time goal. I like the assist and even money with Bedard. And he's hit this in four or five. I've had a couple of them shots on goal because I love the price at plus 125. It seems even if it doesn't get there by the third period, he gets you three, <laughs> kick on Bedard and get that over the shots on goal. So at plus 125, I like that over three and a half. All right, there we go. Liking the uh, shots on goal prop. And I'm going to start at the and when the playoffs begin. Uh, starting to dig in more to the shots on goal and hoping I don't, you know, because I've been, I'm not a big fan of them now with the way we see shots get taken off the board uh, mm -hmm. during games. That always uh, bothers me with betting those, but playoffs, you've got less games, less opportunities. So got to be a little more creative and I will be getting into the player props more once we get into the um, playoffs in a couple of weeks. All right. Columbus, Carolina, uh, next up here, this is a 5 PM Eastern uh, start time in Carolina. Uh, the Hurricanes minus 550, just enormous, enormous home favorites here. Six the total uh, in this game. Um, now, Columbus did win and look impressive last night. But again, Philadelphia kind of f falling apart right before our very eyes. Now you're on a back-to-back -back here uh, on the road in Carolina. Uh, less than 24 hours. This is a brutal spot for Columbus. It's kind of probably part of the reason why they're such a big underdog here. They go from a 7 p.m. Eastern start time last night, 5 p.m. Eastern this afternoon. Less than 24 hours, they're back on the ice. And the travel from Columbus down to Carolina. So they probably didn't get in, you know, to Raleigh until after midnight. So, I mean, this is brutal for Columbus, the way the NHL schedule makers have put this together. Um, so, you know, even with this price, I'm not interested. And they are decimated I don't, it's shocking that they pounded the flyers it shows you how bad philadelphia was last night this is a team with no kent johnson patrick lionate both of their top two goalies merzlikens and tarasov are out although merzlikens might be good enough to come back and start today it hasn't been confirmed yet but apparently the door is open for merzlikens to return but if not you might see malcolm suban uh, in net here for columbus uh which for a very rare start uh, this uh, season with the Blue Jackets. So keep an eye on that. But Fantilli out, Corrali out, Shinikov out, Boquist out, Jake Bean out. I mean, there's uh, Boone Jenner, the captain, who, of course, has had a tragedy in his own family just recently. He's probably not playing either. So um, this is a very shorthanded team. But what value is there with Carolina? I mean, when you're talking in this price range here, minus 150. Can you bet puck line? Nope, no value. Can you bet regulation? Nope, no value. Can you bet first period puck line? And even that's minus a half. You got to lay minus 130 in some spots with first period puck line. So, yeah, I mean, this is a game I'm probably staying away uh, when it's all said and done. I hate to do it, but got to uh, when you're talking about uh, no value with the favorite at all. And you're talking about an underdog that you just can't back uh, in this situation. Uh, what do you think here, Alex? Blue Jackets, Hurricanes. I grabbed the first period uh, over one and a half minus a dollar 40. That has now moved. Uh, even just at MGM is now $1.55. Uh, so I guess people are anticipating the start of Malcolm Subban. So try and grab something live. Try and grab five and a half laying a price, one and a half laying a little bit less than 150 uh, in game. That's the only thing I, I could you know go with here. Like I said, these prices are astronomically high. No way to back Columbus with Subban at plus 410. No way to do anything with Carolina at 550 or cheaper. So it's uh, it would mostly be a pass pregame. Uh, if, if you couldn't get 140 or cheaper than that, and then try to look for some some of the overs in game at, at better adjusted prices and numbers. I'm seeing right now there's uh, you know what I might do? I might do a little split here. The bet MGM, you know, for our first period team totals. That's usually where I like to go for first period team totals. There's an over one minus 140, over one and a half plus 155 first period team total for Carolina. That might be something to consider there, just because that's the best approach, in my opinion. Yeah. And I could see them getting one, maybe even two in the first period. I don't think they're going to be happy with the way they started against Washington on Friday night, even though they won that game. So there could be, you know, uh, an onus on the Hurricanes and Rod Brindamore telling this team, let's let's come out better than we did against Washington. So, uh, and then they sit on the lead, which is what they often do, and they might be capable of it because I don't know how much Columbus is scoring. Decimated lineup against this Carolina defense here. Uh, on a tough in a tough scheduling spot. So if I were to look in any direction with Carolina, BetMGM has first period over one for their team total, minus 140. 
and first period over one and a half for the Carolina team total plus 155. So you could do a little split between the two. I think they absolutely score one goal in the first period. I think that for sure. So if you bet over one minus 140, I think push worst case scenario. But I think there's a very good chance they might end up getting two goals in the opening period and then doing what they typically do. They'll sit on the lead and bring it home uh, against a team that's in a uh, very tough spot here today. The, uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. All right, next up, we continue along here. We've got the Ottawa Senators taking on the Washington Capitals. Uh, Washington minus 140 home favorites. Uh, the total in this game currently at, um, looks like, uh, let me see here, six shaded to the over as far as this game goes. I mean, Ottawa started to head back downhill again after that little win streak. Remember that little win streak? We were talking about it. Here's Ottawa playing their best hockey now that they're out. Well, they've been knocked down a peg or two the last couple back-to-back -back losses to the Minnesota Wild and the road trip, and then back home they lose 4-3 to New Jersey last night. Now they're on a back-to-back -back, uh, against a Washington team that desperately needs the win. It feels like this should be a spot for Washington to get back on track and win, but minus 140 with what I've seen out of the Capitals, that's not an easy bet for me to make. It's just not, especially at this price point here, minus 140, uh, and with what I've seen from them here. The, even the Carolina game on Friday night, you're going to see they got out to that 2 nothing first period lead. Don't be fooled by that. It, the, the shots were like 17-3 to three for Carolina in the first period. They like scored on two of their three shots. One of them was an Ovechkin deflection goal. And then they just got dominated in that game. Not for Darcy Kemper, and I can't believe I'm saying that because he's had a rough year. But he had a really good uh, game for uh, Washington for a change. He kept the minute, but again, they were gassed in the third period. Carolina caught them, tied the game, then got the game winner uh, late in the third period. So this is an Ottawa team they should beat. They've got the rest advantage. It's a back-to-back -back for Ottawa. They're starting to you know, plunder again uh, a little bit these last couple of games. The Senators, their little streak that they had is done. But minus 140 with Lindgren playing the way he's been playing lately. I talked about it. He's played a shit ton of games, and he's it's adding up right now. He's not seeing it right now. These screen these point shots alex repeatedly game in game out right now with washington they sh the opponent shoots from the point he's not tracking the puck he's not picking it up and there's so many of those type of shots that have uh, gone past him and that's a that's a sign of fatigue on a goaltender and he's played a shit ton of games these have been high stress games because of just the importance of every game and trying to make the playoffs so i'm not comfortable personally laying minus 140 with washington or taking washington at all right now uh, in their form but i'm not on ottawa either this is another tough game draw maybe but again you got to trust ottawa to compete on a back-to-back -back. can they do that you know that's going to end up being the question i will say this the two losses they've suffered were both one goal losses so it's not like they were blown out to new jersey and minnesota so maybe i get there with a small piece of the draw other than that i think tricky totals wise lean over because i think washington right now defensively is not and goaltending don't trust them fully right now yeah. in ottawa you know right now team out of the playoffs i'm not betting unders with teams out of the playoffs so over by default if i'm looking at the total here uh, alex what do you think sends caps yeah so i got the over six uh minus dollar 20 i was trying to maybe look at washington over three and a half at a plus price i see plus 115 i might sprinkle on that a little smaller uh obviously they need the game more than ottawa but i, I think like i said they're having their issues on their own back end we should see goals go back and forth so i'm a little more comfortable with that just that over six that's uh, that'll be my larger play on, on the, on this game. And I notice Alex is having that same first period over trepidation with some of these games as me lately. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy lately how it's been a really big time pattern where first period, one goal, no goals. And then suddenly here's the second period and the floodgates open that happened with Calgary and Edmonton last night too. Now the full game didn't quite get there, but the first period was dead as a doornail for the total. And then sure enough, second period opens up and floodgates open. I think we we figured well at least you know you mentioned it the other night in our chat but I, I kind of was thinking about that and the conclusion that I could just try to come up with is that teams realize they're fatigued so they're kind of conserving their energy and not doing much in the first period where you know we talk about October and November everybody's full of energy and they're ready you to think you know, their way in yeah right so 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 they know that hey we have to we have to bottle and conserve our energy and, and that's I think that's what we're seeing especially from uh, like I said these playoff teams and, and certainly these teams that are fighting for points. Uh, which once again kind of leads into looking at the unders, looking at draw season. Uh, you know, if, if they're you know just trying to control the puck, control the pace of play, but they're not taking a whole lot of shots, 
being really conservative with this shot selection, uh, you know, not passing the puck around too much, just trying to, you know, enter and establish uh, the space in the zone. And then that takes away from the, that's kind of killing off clock and taking away from those scoring chances early in the game. Yeah. Yeah. No question. Yeah. John Carlson. Great, uh, great point in the chat from Terry Ray Vegas. It's a hundred thousandth game tonight. So they'll do a little ceremony. They do the thousandth game milestone ceremony pregame for everyone in that spot. But yeah, John Carlson maybe uh, has a big night or at least gets some a point, maybe even a goal. I don't, yeah, and shoots the puck a lot, which he's been doing a lot lately anyway, John Carlson. He has been shooting the puck quite a bit. So, you know, I definitely think John Carlson props are not a bad option here uh, for this game. Uh, we got C-Mac back with us. C-Mac, what do you think here? Ottawa, Washington. Uh, this game. <laughs> what happens here? I thought maybe if the Sens had anything yesterday would have been a decent spot for them. You know, plus money, they get shut out. The Panthers, and they just look horrible again, especially early. I know he got a couple of those goals. I had the over. He talked about him, but man, it is rough. Loser to three straight in this game too. Do we get the goals? It's weird. The prices on these team totals are high. Like the Caps, even the three and a half is plus one ten or around there. Uh, they haven't had three goals in almost two weeks since March twenty sixth, and so it's just been ugly. How good they were kind of defensively and playing the style that they want. It's just kind of crumbled here the last few weeks. Uh, and they're leaky, a bunch of goals. So I couldn't do anything in this game. This was a uh, quick cross off for me. All right. Quick uh, pass here for uh, C-Mac with this one. Batherson for Ottawa for Washington. Ovech Ovechkin's on fire. Ovechkin is again, got their only two goals. Uh, got both of their goals against Carolina. Ovechkin's been very good. And all of a sudden the, um, uh, secondary scoring has kind of tailed off all of a sudden we're not seeing Sonny Milano anymore we're not seeing you know uh Hendrix LaPierre where the hell's he been uh these guys that really stepped up for a while there they're quiet right now and Max Pacioretty's not doing a damn thing uh either for Washington at the moment yeah. so it's been all on Ovechkin's shoulders uh we'll see if he can get a little more support offensively here in this matchup tonight all right Arizona San Jose uh, playing for exercise, Arizona minus 220 road favorite, six the total in this game. This is one of those games where, again, when it's two teams out of the playoffs, I can only look at the over. But this one, I don't know, San Jose has not been that kind of team just uh, lately as much. I mean, we look at their last five games, four and one to the under. They're not scoring a lot. Um, the goaltending has been a little bit better. Uh, Blackwood, by the way, I should point out, who's probably going to start here after Cooley got the game yesterday. Uh, he was better against L.A., kept the Sharks in it. They lost 2-1 to the Kings in that game. So this is one of those games where it's probably not much I do other than maybe a couple of player prop looks. Uh, I would still consider that kid as if he's back in the lineup. I know he obviously didn't score yesterday for San Jose, uh, but it's another home game. The family went there to see his debut. If he's back in the lineup for this back-to-back -back game, you would think the kid out of Quinnipiac, uh, Colin Graff, uh, which you can get upwards of plus 500 for him to score a goal. That might be worth a look. Clean cost, and there's value because he's playing on the top line for San Jose. Arizona, uh, Bukestad, Gunther, Cooley, uh, Doan, who, of course, got on the board in that crazy epic comeback against Vegas the other night. Uh, there's actually a good prop game. Uh, over, maybe something small on over six, but actually what I like here more than anything are uh, props. Uh, and like I said, I think... Uh, Graf for San Jose, maybe Costin for San Jose, and maybe for uh, Arizona. The same players I've basically mentioned because they've all been great lately. Bukestad, Cooley, Gunther, and of course, uh, Josh Doan, uh, who has been uh, terrific. I think I read something that he's got six points in five games, Josh Doan, since joining the Arizona Coyotes. So making uh, his papa, Shane Doan, very, very proud and, and uh, happy. Uh, what do you think here, Alex? Arizona, San Jose. This is a complete pass for me. I, I want nothing to do with either one of these teams. Arizona laying 220 is just uh, crazy, especially on the road. So it's, it's a pass. Mm -mm. No, not after that kind of win either. You know, you have the, the win of your season maybe, that six-goal onslaught against Vegas down 4-1 and you win 7-4. to four. I ain't laying 220 on the road with a team after that kind of spot. But I'm not – I don't like San Jose enough to take them either. Yeah, good call. Uh, what do you think here, uh, Connor Mack, Arizona-San Jose? Yeah, Eklund, huge game uh, yesterday. I think you'd still uh, go back to him at a pretty good price uh, for a goal or shots on goal in this one. This is uh, tough, but I got to do it. I have to have a piece of the Sharks here. 
Uh, I don't think the Yotes should be favored like this. Uh, on the road off the big win, you mentioned in Vegas, just too inconsistent. The Sharks team hasn't been great, but I you were talking about a little bit there, Ian. They've been better defensively a little bit. This team can't light it up, uh, so they have to play their style here. And maybe we get goals, but give me the Sharks at this price, almost uh, plus 200. I got to take it. I don't think that's crazy. I think in a game like this, look, when, whenever I see a game like this, and I'd, I, Arizona is a better team, but this is not a great spot, and uh, the price is awful. I, I thought I would probably lean San Jose too, but yeah, that, no, I'm not gonna, not not gonna uh, with uh, the Sharks. <laughs> not uh, gonna do it. Not gonna do it. No. no. <laughs> All right, Nashville and New Jersey. We've got the uh, Devils minus one fifteen home favorites, uh, six and a half. The total. Yeah, the Devils are slight home favorites here. That did surprise me. I know Nashville lost yesterday, but. Uh, that's, that was a little surprising to me to see, uh, Nashville end up uh, being, uh, slight underdogs here in this match, especially with Soros in that, uh, for this one, they saved him for this game. And it looks like, look, you would think we saw Jake Allen last night. You know, we're going to see tonight. One of our favorite fades, Kaka, Kapo Kakanen for the uh, New Jersey Devils. So, um, yeah, to me, I'm on Nashville here. This price is just a little bit insane, quite honestly. And I know Nashville, I know they let Alex down. I was a little leery of taking Nashville, but I still leaned to Nashville yesterday. But they got they got goalied, you know, by Semyon Varlamov, who had just an incredible game. 41 save shutout for the uh, New York Islanders in that game yesterday. Uh, if Kapo Kakinen has something like that in his repertoire tonight, I'll say salute, well done. Yeah. <laughs> but I just don't see it happening with uh, Kapo Kakinen, uh here in this matchup. It's back-to-back -back for both teams, so there's no real advantage. Although you might even say it's a more of an advantage for Nashville because they just come into New Jersey from Long Island. They don't even have to really change hotels or anything, and New Jersey's got to get back home from Ottawa last night. So probably a little bit of an advantage that way for the, uh, New Jer for the Nashville Predators. It's actually probably easier to get... Uh, for them to turn around and play this game than it will be for the uh, New Jersey Devils. I'm just looking at the back-to-back -back record uh, for uh, these uh, teams, but um, regardless, uh, I'm looking at this as Nashville's pretty cheap here. Off a loss as well last night against the uh, Islanders. So uh, what I think I'll do here is I'll go Nashville money line, and because Kockenen's in net, and I think Nashville might be able to get going, they're a good offensive team still, or at least they have been a good offensive team for the last couple months during this crazy run they've been on. After a rare shutout loss like that, you expect maybe the floodgates can open a little bit here for the Nashville Predators tonight in this game. So what I'm going to do here is Nashville uh, minus 105 uh, money line. And what I did is I also split it with the team total for the uh, Nashville Predators here over three and a half at plus 124. You know, really nice uh, plus money price, plus 124 for Nashville's team total uh, over three and a half tonight. Uh, what do you think here, Alex? Predators, Devils. Yeah, I'll probably be adding that team total as well. I didn't, I didn't uh, search for that. I grabbed one hundred two uh, minus a dollar two with with Nashville earlier today, and now I'm seeing dollar fives, dollar tens, even dollar twenty posts everywhere. So you want to grab that as soon as you can if you like Nashville. But that team total look is definitely uh, worth a spot there as well. I, this is a, a bad number considering just the goaltending alone. <laughs> you got Soros and, and Kockenen's a gigantic mismatch that would have these numbers just. Off of those alone, I, we'd be talking about a 50 cent difference. So, uh, especially when you talk about a national team, still, you know, their playoff team getting ready for the playoffs, coming off of a, a, a tough game just 24 hours ago. New Jersey just kind of playing for exercise right now. This is uh, way too cheap of a price for the national. So, give me the friends. And Jersey's all season been worse at home uh, than they've been on the road. Yeah. This might be, and we've talked about how bad New Jersey's been early in games. You might even be able to tack on a first period here on Nashville. I am. I'm, I'm. I'm tacking on a first period on Nashville. I might even go a step further and give give me Nashville first goal. How many times has New Jersey given up the first goal here on home ice this year? So yeah, well, I'm going to add those too. First goal Nashville. First period Nashville. Full game Nashville. Nashville team total over three and a half here uh, going into this game. I'm tempted by the full game over too. Five straight overs for New Jersey, but I like the Nashville looks more. I do uh, much more. I don't know if New Jersey's going to be lighting it up today. We'll see. They certainly could, but I'm not so sure. Uh, what do you think here in this one, uh, Connor Mack, Nashville, New Jersey? I love it. You got some bets in this. Uh, yeah, there this we go. Well, again, we're splitting <laughs> it up. Around. We're splitting it up. Yeah. yeah, it's not like we're one unit on all four of those bets. We're splitting it up. Oh yeah, I know. I know how you roll. Come on, I got to be on the Preds, and the numbers are pretty good. I 
I have it here. I just pulled up. You mentioned the back-to-back that you were talking about, Ian. Nashville's been pretty good, uh, I think, all year long. They own these Devils. Devils beat them earlier, too, a couple of months ago. I think this is pretty good revenge. Yeah, yesterday, they just couldn't get anything. You know, goalie standing on his head just happened for the Preds. You mentioned the no travel. The line is a little bit fishy, but sometimes you just got to roll with it. I got to be on the Preds here. I got even money. Here too with him. Wow, very good. Speaking of very good, I'm looking at this back to back record for uh, Nashville this year. I'm seeing five and one for them on a back to back this year, the Nashville Predators. So, very good record on, on the second night of back to back games for this team. So, uh, yeah, I mean, and, and you know what? Just as maybe the, maybe people are listening to the show because just as we've been talking about this game and how it opened New Jersey minus 115 home favorites, it's now Nashville minus 115, minus 120 road favorites. There's been a big move the last few minutes to Nashville. So there we go. People kind of maybe waking up and smelling the coffee, you know, kind of seeing what we're seeing. Like, that's a little surprising. You're putting New Jersey out there as a small home favorite at the very beginning. So uh, no doubt. Uh, Like I said, it was just very peculiar to see that line where it opened. All right, Montreal Canadiens, New York Rain. Oh, by the way, anything Forsberg and O'Reilly, go for it. They're going to have a good game. Uh, How many times did they get skunked like they did last night? Not very often. So this this Forsberg over one and a half points prop that I've been betting a lot lately feels like a good night for that. All right, Montreal, New York Rangers. We've got the uh, Rangers minus 360 here, home favorite, six the total. Uh, the Rangers, of course. Now, they didn't play yesterday, the Rangers. So they actually have the rest advantage. They played Friday night in Detroit. They won that game. Credit to them. I thought that was a tricky spot for them. They didn't play great, but they played well enough to win. Opportunistic power play came through uh, and a 4-3 win for them against Detroit. Montreal off a 4-2 loss to Toronto last night. Back-to-back for the Canadians now here in New York against the uh, Rangers. Caden Primo will be in net. And last time we saw Caden Primo, he got shelled by Tampa. Now you got to face another team that's got it going offensively right now, the New York Rangers. So I'm not so sure how much I trust the um, uh, Caden Primo here necessarily. And Alex was on to this. He said this when we talked about the Montreal-Tampa game, that all the good performances lately, and we had seen some good performances lately from Primo. They were against weaker teams. Uh, and then he stepped up against Tampa Bay, and he had a rough night. And now you're playing a, another very, very potent team, the Rangers. Their power plays lethal. They've been scoring goals left and right. I mean, during this great run for the Rangers, where they are 7-1 and one in their last eight games, the Rangers have scored at least three goals in uh, all but one of them. So they've been, and they've scored five, four, six. They've scored four-plus goals, the New York Rangers, uh, in uh, six of those eight games. So they have been... Over City. It's been yeah. cashing, yeah. Yeah, they've been very good. There's no question. Um, and what's scary about the Rangers, and John's pointing it out, a lot of the damage against Detroit was Barclay Goudreau was ice cold before the last few games, and he's starting to heat up. Will Cooley, the rookie, chips in. You know, all of a sudden, you know, we see uh, the Rangers getting this depth scoring. But these are these. There, I know in the back of my head, the Rangers have had these duds at times, just on occasion. I keep thinking Columbus in particular have gone in there and beaten them on a Sunday. Um, so we'll see how they fare here against Montreal. Um, you know, this could be one of those games, too, where um, Montreal, I'm just trying to see with them. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at their recent games. The Florida, the, the bottom line is the Florida game, the Tampa game, and the Toronto game. Uh, all three of those games, um, as I'm looking at it right now, uh, all three of those games had uh, six goals total or more. So it's one of those games where I could see Montreal against a Ranger team that maybe caught flat footed a bit, maybe fine in the back of the net. So I, the team total for Montreal over two and a half, what plus one thirty? I don't hate that, but I don't know if they're going to hold the Rangers below four. Uh, the Ranger team total is over three and a half minus one fifty. Problem is, I don't love that price. I might just go full game over here, thinking the Rangers can do what they do, and that's you know score three four goals minimum, and Montreal can chip in. I see this as, you know, the Rangers early this year, I'll I'll pick the game out. They played a Columbus game at home uh, early in the year, I remember, and I think it was like 5-3 or something like that, Uh, or 6-5 against San Jose way back on a Sunday in December. That that was a Sunday night game, I remember it. San Jose and the Rangers, I remember it. And it was um, 6-5 for the New York Rangers. And they weren't great defensively, but they scored enough. And I could see this kind of, 
be in that kind of a game here with the uh, Canadians and the Rangers here in this one. So I, I will jump on the full game over here with Habs and Rangers. Not to mention, we've talked about it with the Rangers lately. They've been trending over as it is. What's the run now? Nine and one to the over in their last 10 games. So yeah, full game over. Nothing on the side. Uh, what do you think here, Alex? Uh, Canadians, Rangers. Yeah, I like the full game over here as well. But as far as side goes, I know everybody's talking about Montreal, you know, playing this team tough, winning, you know, five of the last 10 meetings, doing well in the first period. So this sets up to be a good live game. If you see Montreal jump out to yeah. a one nothing lead, or, you know, uh, especially if they go take a one nothing lead in, into the uh, locker room after 20 minutes, then that's the buy sign to go. Uh, grab something with New York. Anything you know, laying a dollar forty, dollar fifty would be better than laying three sixty pregame. So, uh, if you like ranges and you don't want to deal with the team total, that would be the way to do it. Just try to ho hope for uh, you know an opening live in game. But I'm just gonna roll with the over six for now, and then maybe look for some things in game later on. All right, good stuff. What do you think here, Connor Mack? Montreal, New York. Yeah, I think that might be a good move because the Habs have played him. Uh, yeah. Well, the last year, year or two, so I don't mind that because the price is huge. And that Rangers game just a little bit off, and the Penguins playing real well. That five-two, like you mentioned, uh, where they didn't get, you know, basically three or more goals. The price is huge for their team total. So when I was going through this last night, I just said, yeah, uh, over nothing. And this is a I get on the props, you know, here for the Rangers um, in this one, and I, I might be on a few. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to choose from. I mean, Lafreniere has been great. Panarin will mm -hmm. you know, score a goal over one and a half points. has been pretty uh, automatic. Maybe you go with the hot hand that is Barclay Goodrow all of a sudden. I'm not kidding either. Like, all of a sudden, like the last few games, he's starting to score. Now, I don't know. He's going to level off again at some point. But, you know, he's feeling it right now. Uh, all of a sudden for the uh, New York Rangers here these last few games. So uh, maybe some uh, d different directions you can go with that. Uh, all right, next up, we've got the uh, St. Louis Blues taking on the Anaheim Ducks. It's back-to-back -back for St. Louis after being in uh, San Jose uh, on uh, yesterday or yesterday uh, yeah yesterday evening it was they were in San Jose uh, we've got St. Louis now minus 140 road favorites five and a half the total here in this game um, I mean you look at this with uh, Anaheim uh, you would think this is an over type of game but Anaheim let me down with that against Seattle so I'm a little bit gun shy now uh, although five and a half is out there I mean I'm very tempted by it but uh, can you trust Anaheim to score? That's the problem. I mean, that was Seattle at home. It's not like Seattle's been buttoning things up defensively lately, and they could only score one goal uh, in that yeah. game. So that's the concern. Uh, St. Louis, meanwhile, uh, Bennington and Dostal projected to be the goaltenders here in this game. By the way, the injuries are starting to mount for St. Louis. Justin Falk, he's day-to-day. -day. He left that game due to an injury that he suffered in a fight with uh, Luke Cunning yesterday in that San Jose game. And now, unfortunately, my guy's also injured here for the Blues. Won't you be my neighbor, Jake neighbor. Neighbors? He got injured against the San Jose Sharks. So Falk on the blue line, Neighbors up front. He's been one of their better forwards. Uh, both may not go here in this game, but uh, what do you do? I mean, do you lay minus 140 with St. Louis? No, I can't. They're out of it. And they lost to San Jose, so they can lose to anybody. But Anaheim, I mean, we're, we, we, we're trying to ask this team to get going here, beat Calgary. And then they come back home and they play like that against Seattle. It's not like they're inducing a lot of confidence right here. So, um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not involved in it. I'm not involved in it. Maybe the over. Nothing other than that. Uh, what do you think here, Alex? Blues Ducks. Yeah, they, I have. Oh, yeah, I have the first period over uh, one and a half minus one fifteen. That's the only thing that I bet in this one. Like I said, probably going to be pond hockey. They roll out the puck and just kind of go back and forth. But like I said, with the injuries kind of mounting. It seems tough to kind of trust either one of these teams to play a full 60-minute effort. So just hoping they didn't give me two goals in the first 20 minutes. That's all. It does feel, John, it does feel like they've adjusted to St. Louis being out. St. Louis, you know, struggling here these last couple, losing to San Jose yesterday. Yeah, because mm -hmm. minus 140, I mean, only laying a buck 40 with anyone against this Anaheim team right now. It does feel a little cheap, but. You know, back-to-back -back situation, playoff dream shattered is not a situation for me to lay, even minus 140. So, And I don't want Anaheim, so it's a pretty easy pass for me. What do you think, C-Max, St. Louis, Anaheim? Yeah, this is a pass. If You know, to bet it, I would take the Blues on the puck line yeah. here. I just, you met, For so long, Ian, too, they were healthy. The injuries were nothing for the, for the Blues. 
uh, and they have a few. It's just tripped them, and they haven't played great hockey. Even the game last month, Ducks jumped on them one nothing, and then it just after the first period, which has happened before, fell apart. I think the Blues scored three in the second, and it was over. They've kind of owned the Ducks. Not the best spot. If the Ducks can get some goals like they did against the Flames uh, a couple days ago, this game could get over, but I don't trust it at all. But, uh, yeah, I'd lay it with the Blues, you know, puck line if I had to. There you go. Lay it with the Blues puck line, if anything, for uh, Connor with the Blues and Ducks. All right, final game. Uh, Saad, you know, Brandon Saad, we've talked about him. If, especially if Neighbors doesn't play, who the hell is going to score for St. Louis? Brandon Saad's actually done a decent job lately uh, of creating offense for St. Louis. Speaking of doing a good job creating offense, the Detroit Red Wings are doing a great job creating offense. They're on the board twice already, and they have an early 2 nothing lead over the Buffalo Sabres just five minutes into the opening period there uh, in Detroit. And again, Detroit wins today, gets two points. They pull themselves into a wild card spot in this crazy race that's just going to go, it looks like, right down to the final night uh, of the regular season at this rate for the uh, third place in, in the Metro and for second place uh, for the second wild card spot as well. Okay, we've had a couple mediocre games to talk about. Arizona, San Jose, St. Louis, Anaheim. What a breath of fresh air to talk about this game to wrap up the Sunday. Dallas and Colorado, ESPN, a national TV game on a sun, a late Sunday night national TV game on ESPN. How about that? Uh, you don't see that every day, but uh, pretty cool. Uh, but it's a great game, Dallas and Colorado. Uh, we've got uh, Colorado minus 125 home favorites here at Ball Arena in Denver. Uh, the total here sitting at uh, six shaded to the over. Uh, here in this matchup. Now, Dallas is on a back-to-back. -back. Colorado, the rest advantage, of course, uh, based on the fact they played Friday night in Edmonton and ended up losing that game 6-2. to two. Um, But they uh, are coming off a mini little three-game road trip, uh, the uh, Colorado Avalanche. This will be their fourth game in seven nights uh, as well. Worth pointing that out. So they've had to play a lot of games in a little condensed schedule. Meanwhile, you look at Dallas, and even though this is a back-to-back -back for them, look at how the games have been spaced out for them lately. They played Seattle on the road March 30th, played Edmonton at home uh, April the 3rd, Wednesday this week, and then they played Chicago yesterday. So there's actually been more downtime in the schedule for Dallas in the last week compared to Colorado. So that might benefit them here uh, in this game against the uh, Avs in this one. Uh, of course, for Colorado, uh, you know, the idea of betting against them off a loss is not something I usually love doing, but you know, you look at the situation, Ranton and being out is a big deal. And I, I know it was only part of that game against Edmonton, but once he left that game, Colorado didn't look right. He's, he's been that good. And he's that important to the uh, Colorado avalanche uh, and Edmonton played well, but I thought it got worse for Colorado after Miko Ranton and left that game uh, due to injury for the uh, abs. And, He's probably not going to play tonight. Now, it hasn't been officially uh, decided upon that he's going to miss this game, uh, but mm -hmm. uh, the chances of him playing are doubtful at this point uh, for Colorado. So there's going to be some line juggling required from Jared Bednar. Right now, it looks like Drouin, McKinnon, Big Val and the Chushkin's probably going to move up to the top line to take the spot of Ranton. He'd be the logical choice, which means you'd have Lekkonen, Middlestat, and you'd probably have to move the old man, Zach Parise, up to the <laughs> up to the second line. He might be the guy that ends up moving up for uh, Colorado. We'll see how this goes. For Dallas, this is a Colorado team that has drummed them, that has owned them, essentially. And this year, these teams have played each other twice. Colorado with a 5-4 overtime win in January. And then I remember it was a BetCast night, February 27th. Dallas was in Colorado. 5-1 Colorado is a brutal spot for Dallas. They had that ridiculous schedule. All these games, that road trip, back home for one game against the Islanders it was on the Monday, and then they had to play on the road back-to-back -back in Colorado on the Tuesday. The schedule got Dallas uh, big time in that one. Uh, I think Dallas could get him here. I do. I, I don't love the series history, but I'm going to take a shot on Dallas here, plus 105. I am. I, I, I think when you look at this situation here, it's a very, very big type type of statement for a Dallas team that's kind of not had their way against Colorado. Avs a little vulnerable right now. They played a lot of games with travel this week. Uh, Dallas comes in here, save Jake Ottinger for this game. And Jake Ottinger has been absolutely spectacular 
for the Dallas Stars. He enters this game. What's what's the run been for him? 6-0 in his last six starts. Two goals or less in all six starts for Jake Ottinger coming into this game. He's given up a grand total of seven goals in the last six games for the Dallas Stars. Ramping up into that playoff form, uh, even on the back-to-back, keep in mind, for Dallas, this was an afternoon game to a late, late night game. So the back-to-back is not as detrimental. You know, you've got more replenish and downtime, replenish time and downtime between the Chicago game yesterday and this one. So I think Dallas can win this game personally. Uh, And obviously on the road, they've been pretty solid all year. So I'm going to take Dallas here, plus 105 uh, in this game. Uh, I think Rantanen, especially if he's out, you know, and that's could be that could be also a symbol to Jared Bednar in Colorado that, hey, let let's let's take it easy here down the stretch. We got Rantanen out. Yeah, I know there's a couple other players that are playing through some injuries. There's talk that mccarr has been playing through a little something lately. Let's take it easy here. And I think Dallas really wants one win in their in their holster, if you will, against Colorado before the end of the regular season. And look, to be honest with you, as far as goaltending goes, Georg, uh, Ottinger's on fire, and Georgiev is kind of gettable lately from what we've seen from him. So, yeah, I'm going to just go nothing on the to- the total's tricky here because I don't know the way Ottinger's playing. I-, I don't know if I'm rushing to over like I normally would be in a game with these two teams, but I do like Dallas here plus one Oh five. Alex, what do you think here? A great game to wrap up the Sunday night, Dallas, Colorado. Yeah, it is. And, and it's an intriguing game and it's a lot of conflict, obviously not just because these two teams are battling for the division and, and their rivals, but conflicting uh trends here and the biggest one that lands on colorado and i didn't realize the shout out to ralph michaels for catching this when teams play in colorado the second night of a back-to-back going back to march of 2021 those teams are all in 21 last 21 meetings and dallas has been in this spot four times including that game that you mentioned with the when we were on the back cast in february that 5-1 loss so that's a that's a bad spot. And we always talk about trying to quantify the altitude and the home ice with Colorado. That may be one of those uh of those those things you can kind of point to. So I don't like Colorado here laying a dollar twenty five with a bunch of these injuries in a huge game. But I'm really leery about Dallas in the second of a back to back, even with coming off. I'm a little of leery of it now too, but I'm sticking with it. I think and, they'll find and, a way. Yeah. Ottinger makes forty eight saves, stands on his fucking head and they win. There you go. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. That's that's what will need to be done, and, and you know you're going to need that from. And uh, you know Yorgiev, like I said, been shaky lately. They've been running him into the ground. Probably going yeah. to be the downfall of the Avalanche once they get into the playoffs. Uh, but I, in a game like this, you know maybe he steps up as well, carries his team, knowing that they're going to be shorthanded some guys offensively, knowing that they're going to have to tighten things up defensively against a good balanced attack from Dallas. So give me the draw here. I got the draw mm-hmm. plus three twenty five. Uh, that's the only thing that I could, could come to a conclusion with here. Even the over kind of scares me off a little bit because, like I said, Colorado missing some guys, having to shake their lines around a little bit. Maybe this thing starts off a little bit slower than what we've seen, and this has been a heavy over trend, a heavy first period over uh, uh, with these two teams. But I probably will be waiting, and, of course, we all will be looking at the second period over because it's a Dallas Stars game. Uh, but that might be the time to look at any full game uh, looks with the total as well. So live looks for the total. Going with a draw, staying off of the side. Bet that guy every game to score a goal for Detroit moving forward. Dylan Larkin, he just made it 3 nothing. He shows up, man. He shows yeah. up. That guy's a heck of a captain. He shows up in big games, plays his tail off. Uh, and, uh, yeah, Buffalo, <laughs> they couldn't even let their fans watch 10 minutes of this hockey game. You know, <laughs> just, you know in this game, all of a sudden, we're two points out. We're down 3 nothing. That's not Buffalo Sabres hockey in the last 15 years in a nutshell. You know, I don't know what is. Uh, there is a lot of time to go. Like, it's not like Detroit's won it yet, but obviously this is just a terrible start, the worst start possible that the Buffalo Sabres could have. Uh, what do you think here in this one, Connor Mack, Dallas and uh, Colorado? Uh, the Sabres was my guy. Real deal prime. I love guy. him. But... I feel bad for him. He's disappeared. Not a shock. <laughs> here you go. Oh, this is good. It should be a, a good hobby game, hockey game. Dallas. Just playing so well. And that game yesterday, Razzie just stood on his head. Well, they have 44 shots, uh, I think. 44 to 17, the Blackhawks win that 3-2. They were thinking about this a little bit. But I have to stick with with the abs. Uh, I just, uh, on the back-to-back there in altitude, I got to take them. It's a little shaky. 
and I you mentioned it the draw I think when you you think of these two teams I think of tight games you know maybe the last few I think there's only been one draw maybe the last five or so but uh classic three two four three type game so I have a little bit on that but uh I do have the abs I gotta take them here at home all right like in the uh, abs uh, at home minus 125 look that that's a da- that's a damning run for the teams on a back-to-back in Denver and obviously that goes against Dallas but I do think that you're right uh, in the chat. I think over saves for Ottinger because, look, I think Dallas. He's will been great. Yeah. Win, so but I think Colorado will carry play and probably have more shots. And I could see this being one of those games where the shots are like 44 26 for Colorado, but Dallas wins like 3 2 or 4 2 because Ottinger plays amazing. And Dallas is more opportunistic because, quite honestly, Colorado doesn't have the better goaltender in this matchup with Alexander Georgiev and the chances that Dallas will get, they'll bury and it'll be tougher for Colorado, you know, to finish their chances. So that's how, like, I definitely think Dallas will win. If, if, if Dallas wins, they could get outplayed, but they could get outplayed and still win because Ottinger's that dialed right now for them. Seven goals in the last six games allowed by Jake Ottinger. And then he has that post game interview with Lundquist and, uh, and Lundquist. I mean, that's just going to make him just, fired up even more. Lundquist enjoys watching Jay Gottinger play right now. So uh, that's a great game, though. Looking forward to it. And like I say, keep an eye on Ranton. And I don't think he's going to suit up. I think they're going to err on the level of being cautious here, Colorado with him. So we'll see how it goes with the uh, Stars and the Avs tonight. Looking forward to that. Great way to wrap up the Sunday with a great game on ESPN as well. National TV uh, Stars and Avs tonight at uh, 10 o'clock. All right. Shout out to everyone in the chat. Uh, oh, by the way, is props in that game that are worth a look. Drouin for Colorado. Uh, definitely, he's been excellent. Just continues to produce for Colorado. He's automatic right now. For Dallas, I'm going to take a shot again if he's in the lineup. He might not be, though, because if Sagan is ready to come back tonight, he uh, Maverick Bork might sit and Sagan comes back in because I think that's what DeBoer is going to do. If Sagan can play, it's probably going to be Maverick Bork coming back, so or coming out of the lineup, I should say. So, uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, Jamie Ben in a game of this magnitude, I think he could step up here. Rope Hints is starting to heat up, and of course, it wouldn't be a Dallas game without me betting on uh, Wyatt Johnston. Uh, oh, he got sent back down. A uh, good call. Okay, Maverick got sent back down, so sa- that probably means Sagan's coming back tonight uh, for Dallas. Uh, but uh, yeah, and Wyatt Johnston, it goes without saying. I think most Dallas games now we're betting props with him lately. All right, great stuff. Great Sunday. Uh, show great Sunday card coming up shout out to everyone in the chat hit the like button uh, if you haven't done so already and here it is our April live betcast schedule there it is on the screen five live betcasts coming up here in the month of April Tuesday April 9th that's this week two days from now we've got a free uh, betcast for all Tuesday April 16th the final week of the regular season it's a Patreon exclusive live betcast and then we have three Stanley Cup playoffs, live betcasts at the end of April. Monday, April 22nd, that one is free for all. Thursday, April 25th, that is a Patreon exclusive. And Tuesday, April 30th, another Patreon exclusive live betcast. So five betcasts all together uh, in in the month of April. Two free for all, three Patreon exclusive. Uh, So make sure uh, you check those out. And if you want to be part of the three Patreon exclusive betcasts, either to tune in or join us on the stream during the betcast, make sure you sign up, subscribe, patreon.com slash ice guys, just $10 per month, goalie charts, totals charts, our daily sides, totals and player props posted on the page each and every day. And of course, Patreon exclusive live betcasts only available there. And our player suite interview series will resume in the off season. Like last year, we'll interview a bunch of current former uh, hockey players. And uh, it was a lot of fun doing that last year. Uh, we will definitely be doing that again this year. So patreon.com slash ice guys, just $10 per month. And again, your subscription goes a long way to keeping the show going long term. So sign up now. Great time to do it right before the playoffs. Patreon.com slash ice guys, just $10 per month. Don't miss out on any of those Patreon exclusive live betcasts coming up and again check out the store unfortunately uh the uh sale is over uh 20 off but you can still get great merch and great gear right now at the ice guys store iceguys.myspreadshop.com
com. All right, we got best bets and bargain bin special of the night coming up in just a moment, right after we hear from our great sponsors, Boston Hemp Inc. <laughs> Boston Hemp Inc. Make sure you check them out. Get 20% off all orders on the site using the promo code ICEGUYS at bostonhempinc.com. All right, bargain bin special of the night. We're in that part of the year where the Sunday cards are a lot bigger, so there's a lot more uh, choice out there when it comes to bargain bin special. Alex, what do you like for the bargain bin tonight? Yeah, heading out to Manhattan. You got the New York Rangers hosting the Montreal Canadiens, and uh, he said, you know, kind of hard to try to find things when looking at a team that's favored in the minus 300 minus 400 range but uh that's why you have player props and that's why you look at these bargain bin specials so i'm with chris Kreider to get two or more goals at plus 850 that's available at fan duel he scored 10 goals in his career against montreal he's one of those guys that really kind of gets things ramped up and going so give me chris Kreider, two goals or more plus 850 that's my bargain bin special for sunday all right, there you go. Chris Kreider, over one and a half goals, two plus goals for the New York Rangers. Bargain bin special of the night for Alex B. Smith. Connor Mack, what do you got for your bargain bin special? I'm uh, going to the Rangers as well here. I think he's got three in the last five. Capo, Caco here, plus 360. I think he can get one tonight. There we go. Capo, Caco. For the uh, New Caco. York Rangers. I know I've gone to the well with that guy before. It hasn't always worked out, but I wish you luck uh, with uh, <laughs> Caco there. Nice price, though, uh, for him to yeah. uh, find the uh, back of the net there for the uh, New York Rangers uh, tonight as they take on the uh, Montreal Canadiens in that one. All right, for my bargain bin uh, special uh, of the night, um, let me see. I'm going to go to that Dallas Colorado game. He's been pretty noticeable lately, he's been playing well. I see a former NHL player who knows a thing or two about hockey, our good friend Jason Demers, who's going to try to be on one of the BetCasts coming up, say about him the other night. He's all over the ice. Uh, what a game he's having. I think it was the game against Edmonton, and sure enough, he scored for Dallas in that game. Let's go with Sam Steele for the Dallas Stars here, and I have noticed him play well. Now, I know he's down the lineup uh, right now in that fourth-line spot, but he's had a, he's had a lot of chances lately. He's had a lot of jump, been playing pretty solid, and he's been chipping in. And you can get plus 800 for Sam Steele uh, to score a goal tonight for the Dallas Stars. So we're really uh, going uh, digging here for the bargain bin. We're, re we're, we're reaching down into that bargain bin, and we're going right to the bottom, and we're picking out a real uh, bargain uh, for the uh, pick today. Bargain bin special, Sam Steele, Dallas Stars, plus 800 uh, for my bargain bin special of the night. All right. Best bets for this Sunday. Alex, what do you like here for uh, best bet? Yeah, I'm going to go with Ottawa, Washington. Uh, going to over six, minus 120. Like I said, I just feel like this could be one of those games where, you know, Washington obviously, uh, you know, has more to play for here and they get that offense running and they said they're having some issues on their back end. So Ottawa should be able to find some goals there as a, as a own. So uh, let's go caps and send uh, over six, minus 120. That's my best bet for Sunday. All right. It's not my best bet, but I like it. It's on my card. Ottawa, Washington, over six, minus 120 uh, for Alex B. Smith with his uh, best bet. Uh, Connor Mack, great job as always on a Sunday with us. What do you like here for best bet? Huh, I took a couple last night. I got to take it. Get the best number you can. I'm glad it's moved. Predators, even money. Get what you can. 
Got to go with the Preds. All right, there you go. Nashville Predators uh, for Connor Mack with his best bet. And my best bet is yeah, the exact same one. Uh, Nashville uh, for me as well. Uh, it's upward. Or, actually, it's gone up to minus 115, minus 120. That's still a very playable price. In my opinion. I think they get the job done. They've been great on the second night of back-to-back games this year. And we've got our one of our favorite goalie fades in the league, Papo Kakinen, uh, in net tonight, most likely, uh, for the New Jersey Devils. Nashville for me. And, and I've got them in other ways, too. First period, I got a little team total uh, as well. But we'll go with the money line as well, minus 115 for Nashville. Uh, to get the job done against New Jersey for my best bet for this Sunday NHL card. That'll wrap up this edition of the Ice Guys. Thanks to everyone for joining us. Hit the like button on the way out. We appreciate it very much. A reminder, the Ice Guys is live seven days a week, Monday to Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern, Saturday and Sunday, noon Eastern. And if you can't watch the show live, you can download the podcast in audio form on all major podcast platforms, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and more. Download the Ice Guys podcast when you can't watch the show live. Great week ahead. BetCast on Tuesday. I think Brett's joining us again on uh, on Monday, so we're looking forward to Brett being back with us. Brendan Perlini joining us on Tuesday. Uh, we're very much looking forward to that. We might actually have Angelo Esposito later in the week as well uh, joining us on the uh, show. So the guests are ramping up here uh, as we get closer uh, to the uh, Stanley Cup playoffs. And uh, great time of year. All these races going on in the East and in the, for the playoffs, just incredible. So it's a great time to be tuning into this show and for us to be able to bring you this show uh, on a daily basis. For Alex B. Smith and for Connor Mack, I'm Ian Cameron. Have a great Sunday. Enjoy the games and good luck. And we will be back with you tomorrow on Monday for another edition of the Ice Guys. Mm-hmm.